Radio WM. Now, the Birmingham Old Rep Theatre on the 28th of April. It's an evening with Martin O'Neill, who's won the European Cup as a player, captained Northern Ireland at a World Cup in 1982, managed the Republic of Ireland, been to European finals, won domestic trophies as a manager and a player, three top six finishes with Aston Villa. His autobiography came out fairly recently. It's a very entertaining read. On days like these, my life in football... A career of over 50 years, and he'll be talking about that on the 28th of April. Martin O'Neill, how are you? Hello, Paul. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Just before we start, Roy Hodgson is back in football. Now, he's been a great manager. He's 75. You are considerably younger than that. So, is there, Martin, one big job left? (laughs) Who knows, Paul? Who knows? I must admit. Uh, First of all, I think that you have to be asked for a start. And secondly, you have to either accept or decline. So considering none of the two have happened so far, I'll hold that in abeyance at this minute. But when you look at your CV, I mean, you have the experience, you've, you've won the trophies, you've been there, you've worked under some incredible managers like, like Brian Clough, but, I mean, Villa fans will know you from three top six finishes, which Villa might actually emulate this season. It remains to be seen. But um, on the night, on the 28th of April, you'll be, well, spilling the beans recounting some stories, and and there's a lot in the book, but there's obviously quite a few more that you didn't get get in the book. (laughs) I suppose uh, there's something in that. Yeah, it's just that um, someone asked me would I uh, want to go to to Birmingham to just to have a a question and answer about Mm. um, about a number of events. Obviously, Aston Villa would be covered in that particular time. But as you mentioned, a recount of of, uh, life over 50 years, you know, both as a player and as a manager. I came into the game way back in as a young player, 19 years of age in late 1971. And that was, if you consider, uh, you know, less than six years after England had won the World Cup in 1966. So, you know, my career spans uh, uh, quite a number of generations. uh, You know, I think it's, it's... it should be interesting, in it? Well, it's bound to be. And there's a lot to get into as well. And there's bound to be questions about working with Brian Clough from the early days. Mm-hmm. And when you, when you go to Nottingham Forest as a, what, 18, 19 years of age, and yeah. you, you're under the tutelage of someone like Brian Clough, then you are going to learn quite a lot, aren't you? Oh, of course. Well, that's one of the great managers of all time in the game. Probably the most charismatic manager that's ever been in the British game. People say he was a product of his time when perhaps, you know, there were only a couple of channels uh, on the TV channels at the time. And therefore, he was he was not just a, a footballing man. He was on Michael Parkinson about every five weeks, something like you see at the time, you know, having audiences of, you know, 15, 16, 17 million people. Yeah, there's no, no question that he was um, a charismatic man but essentially a fantastic manager, no no question about it. And it would be very difficult not to have learned something with him, having spent five or six years with him. And presumably, uh, during the, the, the night at the old rep, people will be asking questions. You have no idea what they're going to be. Yeah, th- that's right. I don't mind. I mean, I, I if, <laughs> if there was something... I genuinely don't mind, because that, that's the nature of the business. If someone wants to ask me the departure of Aston Villa, I, I've got, I, I don't think I have any, any real problem about dealing with that. I say I wish now I'd be, you could turn the clock back, you know. Uh, hindsight being a wonderful thing, I think I would have dealt with it uh, totally differently. But uh, that's such as life, Paul. Well, I, I mentioned trophies. I mean, you won League Cups with Leicester. You won uh, a stacks of trophies at Celtic. Took the Republic of Ireland to the, the Euros. Top six finishes with Villa. Your first goal, another West Midlands link. I think your first professional goal was against West Bromwich Albion. And so the interesting thing about it, Paul, that day, it was for people of a certain uh, a certain era, a certain vintage. Uh, there was a little lad called Asa Hartford. Asa mm. Hartford was a really, really terrific footballer, Scottish international, youngish player playing for West Bromwich Albion. Was being transferred to Leeds United, which was going to be a massive transfer because Leeds United probably the best side in the country at the time. And um, he failed the medical with a little hole in his heart. Now, he came back to play for West Bromwich Albion and ended up having a great career, but the field medical garnered big, big headlines at the time. And the point I'm making is that that game that I came on and scored in my debut was actually Asa Hartford's first game back as, as a West Bromwich Albion player, having sealed the medical with John Revy and Leeds United. So, really interesting. And that's the kind of thing that happens in, in football. Some things... 
are, are, are meant to be. Some things are not. You need a little bit of luck when you get into different jobs. And I know you've talked about that in your autobiography, that, you know, if certain people had decided not to take the job or had taken the job, it's a sliding door thing. I, very much so. And I, I noticed that absolutely. For instance, at Wick and Wonders, where it all started for me, really, if uh, Kenny Swain, who's an um, excellent footballer, full, fullback, for Aston Villa won the um, European Cup way back in 1982. He was the assistant manager to Dario Grady at, at, at Crew Alexander, and he had been offered the job at Wickham, had decided to take it, then changed his mind overnight and, and didn't take it. And as a consequence, I got the job at Wickham. So who knows what might have happened. And for instance, my days at Celtic, there were a number of big candidates in for the job at Celtic at the time. It's Dermot Desmond, who was the major shareholder at Celtic, had decided to go down another route. Who knows, you know, what, what, what might have happened. But obviously my, my, my time at Leicester, I loved after a really, really, really sticky start. And perhaps maybe I, I would have stayed on there until they got rid of me. You know, interesting times, as you mentioned, sliding doors moments. Yeah, you, you are still watching quite a lot of football and that there's never been a relegation scrap in the Premier League, uh, the like of which we've seen this season by the looks of it, and a two-horse race at the top, which may well go to the wire. So there's plenty happening. Oh, there's loads happening, absolutely. And any, anyone forecasting anything like this here would, uh, would almost be foolish to do so. You know, the, the relegation scrap is, is extraordinary, Paul, really extraordinary. You're talking about maybe eight, eight teams still involved at this stage. It's incredible. The race for the, for the title, obviously, between Manchester City and Arsenal. Again, a lot of dependence, I suppose, in the big game at, uh, at the Etihad where they, they play each other. If, if Arsenal can come out of that unbeaten in the game, let, let's say on scales anyway, and you'd probably feel that they're maybe favourites to win it. Well, there's lots that can happen. Really, really interesting. Yeah, and as a final point, Martin, there have been more Premier League managers sacked this season than in any other. So it's a pretty precarious job. I mean, it exemplifies the amount of money and the issue about teams being relegated from this, what is now a behemoth. There's a couple of things about that there, Paul. For, for a start, anyone who ever went into this job as a manager and said that they have a project, there's a project, is talking nonsense. There's no such thing as a project anywhere either. You know, you do not have the time that you you are judged immediately from the first day that you set foot in that in in that football club. It doesn't matter whether you don't know the the strengths of the reserves or whatever the case may be. You are judged from that from that moment. Now it's always been like that, or certainly has been since I've been in management. But it just seems so incredibly cutthroat just at this minute. Young Graham Potter signs a a six or seven year deal at, at Chelsea, feeling that the, the owners have decided that he's the man that's going to lead them now for the next couple of years. What has happened last seven months in the job? Brendan Rodgers wins the, the FA Cup a couple of seasons ago uh, with Leicester City out of a job. Now, the point I'm trying to say to you is this year that Leicester City, for instance, I, I, I really enjoyed my time there. Really, it was fantastic. But Leicester City are now being judged by winning the league away back in uh, in 2016. That's the sort of thing now that you that you're faced with as a as a manager. And I think you just have to accept the consequences. You know, it would be lovely. It would be an honourable idea. I, apparently, it was mooted somewhere along the way that somebody said that uh, clubs should not once they appoint a manager, he has to be there for at least 12 months. Well, I, as I said to you, an honourable idea, but not so sure it's ever going to happen. And I have to say that if I owned a football club, I'm not sure I would be manacled with that sort of thing hanging over me, particularly the results are not going so well. No, it's a precarious uh, lifestyle. It's a, a well-paid lifestyle, but it's pretty precarious, all down to results. And Martin O'Neill has had some great success as a manager. A 50-year career, over 50 years in football. He'll be talking about it April 28th, an evening with Martin O'Neill at the Birmingham Old Rep. Uh, Martin, a pleasure to have you on the show. Stay well. Oh, Paul, thank you very much. Really appreciate it.